I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May. Right, this is a neat way to travel. NASA's got a huge need for graduates in STEM fields. They're continuing drop in the number of students going into STEM programs, uh, and NASA's looking for ways to try and turn that around. And they wanted something to show young people how uh, a space exploration experience might be fun. Moonbase Alpha is a proof of concept game. This is a hypothetical moon base. It's set in 2035. We felt a great sense of responsibility to the employees at NASA to uh, make a small game uh, very realistic. This is all creating a simulated environment so that students are able to do these things in, in a game-based laboratory, essentially, instead of having to just work it out on paper and imagine it or look at a video that's not interactive. And then Virtual Heroes had to make sure that the animations lined up with the physics so that it looked accurate and, and looked like you were really moving in that environment. I was the lead programmer on Moonbase Alpha, so I made some of the um, technical decisions. On Moonbase Alpha, uh, I was a lead artist on that and I, I did a lot of the animation. We had our own system set up for, for characters and how they, how they reacted to, to the physical laws on the, on the moon. Every game has a typical set of animations. Usually there's an idol and there's a, a walk. Now a lot of times video games bend reality a little bit to make it more fun. But in this game, you're on the moon, so gravity is uh, one-sixth of its value on Earth. So you can jump higher, you can jump longer. So uh, one of the first things we did was figured out what it would look like to walk and jump on the moon. You're used to the way you walk here on Earth, the way you do things here in this gravity. So we had to just kind of take the data and make it look like it. We came across some videos from uh, when astronauts were walking on the moon uh, in the early 70s and uh, noticed that a lot of times they were actually uh, uh, jumping. First law is an object in motion will continue to stay in motion. So, for example, in our game, um, if you jump and you're moving, then you'll continue to, until you hit an obstacle. There's no way to switch your direction while in the air. Um, that's in contrast to a lot of games where you typically have what's called air control. You can control your movements a little bit in the air. And that's kind of fun to do. And when you get bored of that, you eventually just, you know, hold the thumbstick in a direction and you eventually hit the floor again and that's because you have air control. But on the moon, there is no air, so that would basically be impossible. <laughs> in our game, you, you can't control your character while you're in the air. So Newton's second law, of course, is F equals MA, which uh, you use any time you want to consider the force acting on an object. Uh, so if I give an object a certain force and it's very heavy, um, it'll accelerate a little bit. And if I give another object uh, the same force, like a ping pong ball, and it's very light, then it'll accelerate a lot. A lot of the things that I've been discussing have to do with the reduced gravity on the moon, and gravity is a force. To do the calculations involving how long each stride is, to consider your leg as a simple pendulum, you would have to use Newton's second law in order to, to set up that um, equation. So here, oh is the hop. So in the game, the hop is used to, to um, move the greatest distance. This motion then gets placed into the engine, and then whatever, whatever the programmer has written to control his translation then takes this information and, and moves him in space. We thought a little bit about um, how high the human can jump. Now on Earth, if I jump up right now, I'm going to just jump a little bit. And uh, I, I would jump up for about a quarter of a second. On, on the moon, 
because the gravity is six times less, you can work out the physics and you would get one and a half seconds. And in fact, in our game, uh, if you do a, a straight jump from a standing position, you, you are in, off the ground for 1.5 seconds. So I don't know where else I would have been able to animate an actual uh, walk on the moon. One of the reasons we went with this project uh, and we use games and simulations is it's easier to show people what we're talking about than just say close your eyes and imagine what it's like to be at this gravity. If it doesn't feel natural, if it doesn't feel right, you know, the, the uh, player or the audience will be able to tell. So when you're in the astronaut avatar and you're playing in the game and, and you hop, the motion uh, is is realistically what it would be like if you were functioning in that environment. And that's much easier to demonstrate uh, by playing in the game than it would be by saying imagine it or just do it in a mathematical equation. It was a challenge, but it was it was a very welcome challenge. People actually get into the game and, and they, they feel like they're on the moon. Uh, and part of that is the, the actual physics that we put in.